The threat of tropical storms hangs over Taipei 101. It's not fear of collapse, but a delicate issue of customer comfort. The typhoons that blast through the city of Taipei mean driving rain and 160 km an hour winds slam against Taipei 101, and it feels it. You see, a tall building like this is prone to bend in the wind. Remember the bamboo, flexibility and all that. Now, some flexibility in a tall building is a good thing, that is difficult to avoid, but too much, and it can give the people inside it motion sickness. When I asked the engineers what a typhoon might feel like in a tall building, they said, try eating soup on a bus. So I did. Before Taipei 101 was built, it had to overcome the problem all flexible buildings face, swaying back and forth in high winds. And like any structure, it has a natural frequency. And in this case, one complete cycle of swaying motion from here to here and back again takes about seven seconds. Now, for customers in the restaurant, that would be like sitting on board a bus that every three and a half seconds accelerates and then breaks. And that's the delicate problem I'm talking about. At the top of the Taipei Tower in a typhoon, you wouldn't just spill your soup. You'd probably see your whole lunch again. The building's accelerations or movements can be plotted. This is uncomfortable. The designers of Taipei 101 must slow down the acceleration and deceleration, smoothing the rate of change to avoid motion sickness. But how on earth do you stop a building over half a kilometre high from picking up a nauseating sway in strong winds? This is how the world's largest and heaviest damper, suspended between the 92nd and 87th floors on 16 huge steel cables. Heavier than three jumbo jets, the giant ball will swing like a pendulum. The swinging counteracts the building's sway. It uses a property that all objects have. It's called inertia. If something is stationary, it wants to stay still. If it's moving, it wants to carry on. The desire of an object to keep doing what it's doing is inertia at work. Back in the 1950s, a researcher at Cornell University encountered the destructive side of inertia. His name was Hugh de Haven. After surviving a serious air crash, De Haven was motivated to study collisions. As surprising as it may sound today, back then, the common belief was that you were better off being thrown free in a car crash. De Haven realized the damage was done as passengers fly loose and impact their surroundings, and that inertia was the culprit. But restraining them would protect them. In 1951, Hugh de Haven files a patent for the three-point seatbelt and car passenger safety leaps forwards. Two decades later, the inertia reel safety belt is introduced, initially by Volvo and Ford. It leaves you free to move around, only locking under sudden movements. It uses the very same property of inertia that Hugh de Haven realized caused injury. Inside an inertia seatbelt sits a heavy steel ball. When a car is in a collision, the inertia of the ball means it will move independently. The moving ball hits an arm that pushes up and triggers a process that locks the belt. Inertia is also harnessed in the giant 600-ton steel ball suspended at the top of Taipei 101. When the building sways, it swings like a giant pendulum. It then pushes against oil-filled shock absorbers, or dampers, that dissipate the sway. I want to check out the damper for myself, so I have permission to go into a construction area underneath it. It feels a bit like caving, except I'm in a tunnel over 80 storeys up. Wow! Here it is, the heart of it. Six metres in diameter, and made up of 41 separate steel plates. 
Only now do I get a sense of what a radical and inspired idea it is. Suddenly, now I see it, I understand much better about how it works. This massive ball, this weight, sits here in the middle of the building. And as the building starts to move, at first the ball resists that movement. Then it starts to move, but that's where these come into play. And they're, well, they're kind of like the shock absorbers on your car, only massive. And as the ball moves, these absorb the energy. They soak it up. And all of this is happening. Hundreds of tons of steel swinging about, 80, 90 storeys up. C.P. Wang, the architect of Taipei 101, has his own demo of the damper at work. So I went to meet him at the top of his award-winning building. When wind hits the building, the building really moves. Yeah, it starts doing all that for a long time. It makes people uncomfortable uh, working in the building. So what we have designed is this. If you would please take that down. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And this and is more... Places with this. Yeah, the purpose this is has got a ball in yeah. it. This is our damper, uh, actually the heart of the building. Wang explains his metal ball in this demonstration is in an oil-filled tube. This best represents the oil-filled shock absorbers attached to the giant damper. So okay, so I'll mount that, that in. So this is now with your yeah. damper in. Now uh, the wind is blowing again and... Uh, wow! Yeah. So it doesn't stop it moving, but once it started moving, it takes the, the violence out of the movement. It mm -hmm. doesn't accelerate or slow down as quickly. It's a more gentle feeling. I suppose what it's doing is giving you a better ride up here, isn't it? Buildings are for people to use, so if we cannot make the people comfortable, we uh, don't have a good building. On the 3rd of October 2005, Typhoon Long Wang blasts hurricane force winds across Taiwan and presents the damper system with its first serious test. This film shows the ball in action as the 110 km an hour winds blow that day. As it begins to swing, the giant oil-filled cylinders take up the energy from 500 tons of swinging steel. This extraordinary footage, filmed on a cell phone, reveals the ball damping 545,000 tons of skyscraper as she sways in the typhoon. After three hours, the winds abate leaving Taipei 101 to face another day.